and we are back with our $5,000 boat. On the last episode, we picked this thing up, we replaced the outdrive for $1,250, and we took it out on the lake the next day and thoroughly enjoyed an afternoon on the water. We have a lot to be thankful for with this boat and we are really excited to keep making it better and keep learning how to be better boat owners. On this episode, you will see us prep the boat because we are going on a 10 day camping trip with our family on Lake Washita in Arkansas, one of our favorite lakes. So what do y'all say we get to work? Aaron spent a few days cleaning and degriming the boat. Um, the scum ring was pretty bad and it had streaks of like scum and grossness along the side here. And man, does it look pretty. He did a great job. Here's what he's using. Instant hole cleaner by Starbright. Pretty cool. Flashback to the last episode where we ran the boat quite a bit, but weren't sure if it was running perfect. Is that a cam? Or is that a miss? <laughs> so we put spark plugs in it, checked everything, and we still had a miss. And so we checked spark for the spark plugs. Everything seems good. So we pulled the intake off, and now we're gonna check the injectors for ohms. Um, what I read is it needs about 12 ohms of resistance, and 12 to 16, I think it was. And they're all checking to be the exact same. So I don't think we have one that's worse than the rest. So they might be clogged up. These injectors are real expensive, so we don't want to just go buy them and throw them in there and see if it works. That is definitely dirty. It's got brown stuff coming out of it. That looks way cleaner. Yeah, that looks... A little build up on that side, I think. But the screens look cleaner to me. Mm -hmm. Yes, those spiffied up really nicely. We cleaned the other five injectors and Aaron reinstalled them into the engine. Look how fast this man works. Now we cross our fingers that this dang thing runs good. We have loaded the boat up with a few things that we might need for another test drive. Our plan is to take the boat out again on our lake and test everything after we clean the injectors, replace the spark plugs, and Aaron also replaced the cap and rotor. Uh, the boat seems to be running really, really well, so we're pretty excited to take it out again. We've got a family camping trip coming up at the end of the month, which is in about a week. And so we wanna get more experience under our belt of actually launching and driving this thing. So that's the plan. And it's a pretty warm day here. And of course we don't have a generator yet, so we won't be able to run the AC, but we've thought that just maybe if it's a nice evening, we might stay the night on the boat. Finally made it out on the water. Right at sunset. <laughs> night on the boat. It was absolutely fantastic. We had fresh air blowing in the hatches. No AC really wasn't that bad. We thoroughly enjoyed it. I would say our test night was a success. Launching and loading a boat this big is a whole new deal for us. We've had ski boats 
for the last 20 years and so launching and loading them we had that down to a T this is a whole new game so learning where the trailer needs to be in correlation to the ramp all of those things is a learning curve if anyone has suggestions we're totally all ears there so far we're doing pretty good and learning as we go you're a real good boy you're a real good boy <laughs> yeah you are We have now taken it out three more times and we've slept on the water twice. We've had pretty good success with it. The engine's running smooth and cool and she's not taking on a ton of water. So we have about, how many miles is it? 300 miles to this lake where we're going to camp. So we're also going to prep the truck. We love hearing feedback. Even when you guys aren't so nice about it, we still read it and appreciate it. And one of the things was that our hitch has the reduction adapter on it and we know that's not ideal. We only live a few miles from the marina where we pick this boat up and where we launch the boat. So we haven't driven it far, but we still know that that is a problem. And so we've bought, uh, you can kind of see it in the grass there. We've bought the proper size. So that will be beefed up and be sure to hold the weight of the boat. And in addition to that, we are going to modify our trailer so that we can strap the boat down because we had lots of folks tell us that we also need to be strapping the boat down instead of just having it sit on the trailer. So lots of good stuff. So the first thing we're going to attack is our hitch. We did look and this hitch that we're using only has a 5,000 pound capacity. And this one that we bought is a 14,000 pounder. Doo -doo -doo -doo. So this one should be beef enough to handle this puppy. Um, the boat's around 7,000 pounds and we think the trailer's around 1,500. So with a combined weight of about 8,500, this should do it. Let's get it. So we're taking off our two and five sixteenths ball because we have a two inch ball that we'll put on this receiver to pull other smaller trailers with. That way, the big one's just set up for the boat. Thanks, Sam. So Emily's in the house editing again. Uh, we got some feedback from the audience that said we really should switch out those 28 pitch props back down to the 24s. And that'll give us more RPM on wide open throttle and it'll also give us more torque, which I think it needs. We have about a five hour drive all the way to Lake Arkansas. We're gonna spend 10 days out there on the water and we're super excited about it. But I don't know anything about these tires, about the bearings, the axles or any of that. So I'm gonna check all that over. We're gonna put new LED lights in it because the trailer lights on the truck are indicating that left blinker's not working and right blinker's not working. And we also verified that. So we're gonna put new lights back there because we think maybe they got wet and destroyed them. And plus LEDs are just a lot brighter and I think they're safer. So first thing I noticed, I jacked this thing up and we have some wiggle. So this bearing's loose. I don't think it's worn out. I just think it's loose. Uh, but we're gonna check all that stuff. The tires. I'll show you how we read the date code on them. They're about five years old, which is questionable for a trip like this. It just depends on if it was stored outside or anything like that. So we'll check the tires for cracks. And if we absolutely have to, we'll go buy new tires. I really don't want to because it's going to go down to Arkansas and stay there. And we're going to be traveling three miles at a time with it. So we won't be doing a lot of trips back and forth. It's just going to be basically from where we store it to the lake and then back. So I don't want to put brand new tires on it, then I have them sit down there for three or four years and just rot. So we'll investigate that, see if we have to. Hopefully we don't. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this bearing buddy off. Now there should be a cotter pin in here. You can already see that nut's just super loose. So there's something going on there. Let's see if we can clean it off and see if there's a cotter pin in it. It may have just backed off. So it's got a lot of movement, but it seems like there is a cotter pin right here. hard to tell what I'm looking at here. There's something holding this on, but not holding it very well. I wonder if it's, this needs to be bent back that way. Oh, 
Whatever I did, the nut's coming off now. Okay, so what we were looking at, there's to be a washer. It goes up on there, and then when your nut's tight, you just bend this tab over and hold it in place. And clearly, that didn't work very well. The bearing looks really good. The race looks great. And I'm trying to pull the whole thing off, but I just figured out that there's disc brakes on the back. So that's going to be holding the rotor and preventing it from coming off. So I need to figure that out. Looks like it's just got a couple of Allens on it. But first, I think I'll pop this tire off. In order to put a load on it, I'm going to stab the bearing back on there. That way, we're not putting anything in a bind. You can see there we've got a disc brake and that's what's keeping it from coming off. So I'll remove the caliper, then we'll remove the disc, and then we can pull that hub off and look at the inside bearing and see what we're working with. By looking at these brake pads, they actually look pretty new. There's not much wear on them, so that's a good sign. Okay, and all that looks to be in great condition. There's plenty of grease on all that stuff. The race is in great condition. I'm guessing that the reason that one was loose, it must have just been that they didn't get that washer in place right. It happened to any of those. All that looks beautiful. Well, I'm gonna check this bearing out, see if it's good. If it is, I'll put it all back together, put some grease in there. All right, so we're gonna knock this seal and the bearing out all at once so we can get a good look at it. Obviously, when you do that, you destroy the seal, but that's okay, it probably needs to be replaced anyways. That bearing appears to be in really great shape. If I don't see any major wear on any of this stuff, I am probably just going to grease it and put it back in there because, like I said, this thing's only going three or 400 miles and then it's basically going to live there and only go to the lake every once in a while. And that race does look like brand new. So what's next? I'm going to get the number off this seal, order me, I guess, six of them so that I can check everything out and then we'll get it all back together. So I repacked that bearing. I went and got me a seal. We will knock that dude in there and put this back on. Our trailer has nicer brakes than our Bronco. <laughs> A lot nicer. <laughs> Good job, Aaron. Right. He's been doing a whole bunch of this work on this boat himself because I've been in signed editing. <laughs> I'm editing uh, episodes of the Bronco for our channel and then I'm editing another series that I'm shooting for Peak Auto. So um, I just finished wrapping that so I'm getting ready to get back to work on whatever project needs to be taken care of here. Should I start drilling the hole in the back for the strap? Yeah, I think that's what's next. Okay. I'm gonna get this off the jack and jack stand before we go moving things around too much. True. So we're not gonna bore you guys with doing all of these, but at least now you've seen us do this one and I'll repeat it off camera. Times five. Yep. <laughs> Alrighty, the next mission is to install this here hook so that we can strap the back of the boat down to be sturdy. Now, this is something we've never done on a boat. We've always had ski boats and just pull them on the trailer and take off. Uh, but we had a lot of commenters tell us that we need to be strapping this boat down. And it never would have crossed our mind being that it's like 6,000, 7,000 pounds. Um, but you guys make a great point. We are extremely thankful for all of the experts that come through with knowledge and thanks to each of you for giving us feedback because we learn from it. And uh, this is one of the things that we're going to implement. I'm gonna pull these props off because these are pitched for 28 and we need 24s, which is what's on our old out drive. I didn't know how to do this because there are two props. So what I've seen online is you can see where the part number is on both props. You want those lined up and then you mark your housing here as a reference. And you go back on with the other props, you line those up and everything should be good. I've also heard it doesn't matter, but I'm not willing to take that risk. I've already got this nut loose. So what I understand is this first prop should just pull off. Okay, so there's that. And then there's this wedge bushing thing that goes in between there. So we'll set that up there. And then on this next one, 
we have this very large nut and there's a special socket for it and I do not have it. So I'm gonna go see if I've got some channel locks that'll work on it or maybe a big crescent wrench. Let's cross our fingers. So a couple things I know from my research. It's a good way to lock this prop up is to put a board in between here. And I also know that this torque's to 100 foot pounds and there's almost no chance I'll get it off with this. But I don't wanna go buy more tools if I don't have to. Whoa, that was loose. Oh, that's strange. That was really loose. Well, hopefully there's not something broken up inside there that caused it to loosen up. Maybe they just didn't get it tight enough. Emily, this nut was loose. What? Yeah, the inside nut just came right off. I thought it was going to be super tight because everything I've read and seen, it shows to be uh, the, it's required to lock it down to 100 foot pound, and that was about 2 foot pound. So I was saying hopefully there's not something that's giving way in here that would cause it to be loose. Anybody need some 28 Bravo 28 3 props? <laughs> Well, there they we are. have some. <laughs> so we'll clean all this up, get some new grease on it. I'll go pull those other props off, throw them on here, and hopefully get them tighter than they were before. Yeah, I bet you will. Time to pop this old tail light off. So here's our out drive that we pulled off of it. And you can see there we have 24 pitch props. Those are the ones we want to use. So. Oh man, I did that just kind of wishful thinking. <laughs> It'd be loose and it is loose. I'm pretty sure they said these need to be 40 or 60 foot pounds and that was again like maybe five. It really wasn't tight at all. So we're gonna use this nut because it's not funky like the other one. The other one takes a special socket and I do not have it. So we'll use this nut. All right, got it. Well, it's tighter than the other one. Nope, it was pretty darn loose. How freaking weird. Okay, I'm gonna shut the camera off, get this nut off, and we'll see you back at the boat. You probably can't see it from back there, but this nut has a beveled section and it goes toward the prop. It's a wedge. about 10 times tighter than it was. I really wish I had a torque wrench to put on there, but I don't want the socket, so this is gonna have to do. Good job, Aaron. Yeah. You can see here the part numbers are lined up. Sweet, props are on. Yay, yard repair. Look, I am not stupid. Those are supposed to be torqued. But I didn't have the wrench on the inside one, and I can promise you that's plenty tight. And so much this one out here. It's good and tight. Good and tight. Yep, that feels good. They turn easy. Okay, I have my two wires crimped, and um, my waterproof butt connector um, shrank down on one of my wires, and I need to do the other one now. Alrighty, we will let those cool down and then slide the heat shrink on and heat that up. I think she's done. These guys were not, in fact, marine grade taillights. <laughs> they got a big hole in the bottom. So that's why they didn't work anymore. Sorry, guys, you no good. Moment of truth. <laughs> I hope my wiring worked. Let's go check it out. It didn't blow up. <laughs> The light on the side. Yeah, tail light. Ooh, and that one shines down on the license plate all fancy light. Sweet. Oh, these look so good, babe. Okay, let me go hit the blinkers. Okay. Yep. Oh, yeah. Nice. We have brakes. Yeah. It works. Yep. 
Nice work. And they look really pretty. They do. Just a bay liner. <laughs> Bottom of the barrel. <laughs> we'll take it. Piece of junk. That's what everybody <laughs> wants to say. I like it. I think it's just fine. You know what I think? What, babe? It's at least $5,000 better than my tent. <laughs> I'd have to agree with that one. Well, it's currently the day before we leave for our camping trip, and Aaron and I are on a little adventure to get new trailer tires. Now, the tires on it looked really good. It was painful to realize that they needed to be replaced, but they were five years old. So here we are at a little tire shop in Wills Point, which is a sweet little East Texas town, and the man that owns this tire shop had a listing on Craigslist? Yeah, uh, Facebook Marketplace. Facebook Marketplace, and this one is always shopping. Here's the problem. We started working on the wheel bearings, spun them, and sure enough, where they've been sitting for the last five years, there are cracks in the tread, like right up in the middle. So the chances of them blowing are almost 100%. So it's frustrating, but we get new tires now. So we ended up here, and we're buying them for a great price, 100 bucks yep. a piece? Yeah, they're 99 a piece. They are really good i think there's 13 ply tires i don't don't quote me on that but it's somewhere around that uh, the biggest deal was we could not find tires locally so the fact that he had them in stock and he also had a whole spare with a rim that fits the trailer so one deal in and out and we can hit the road it was the smartest decision and sometimes those hurt yeah this is one of those, um, but we're glad to be doing it. And um, tomorrow we will hit the road with the family. That's right. Well, the sun's coming up on departure day and we are finalizing everything with the boat. We scored from a close family friend who used to have big boats, a foldable canoe. And he said that this is what he would use to go back and forth from shore. We are so excited about it. It's called an Insta boat. <laughs> so Aaron has cut up a noodle and we are securing it to the uh, front of the boat. And we are so excited to unfold it and use it once we get to Washita. I will be pulling my grandparents camper with their Suburban. Um, I've been honored to do that the last few years to take the load off of them. So Aaron will be pulling this rig and I will be in a Suburban. So I'm just wondering, does anybody else's family pack entirely too much for a week or so of camping? Like, oh my gosh. Mother! <laughs> There's my grandparents with their little camper. That's the rig I'll be driving. It looks already overloaded. <laughs> Even baby Lily's ready to go. Are you ready, kid? Yeah. <gasps> We're going camping. We're going camping. Ralphie, are you ready? Oh, you bet. Absolutely. Even Ralphie's ready. <laughs> kid looks very serious. Your sister makes up for it. Oh my gosh, you guys got a kiss. Did you see that? She's blowing kisses like crazy. It's time to load up, y'all. Yep. Hit the road. the road. On the next episode, you will see us live aboard our $5,000 boat for 10 days on the lake. We are so excited and we cannot wait to see y'all on the next episode. P.S. Thank y'all so much for the support on the first episode of this boat. I don't know if we have the YouTube algorithms to thank or if everybody just agrees that it was such a great deal on a pretty dang good boat and it was worth watching a video on. Whatever the case is, it helped push us over 100,000 subscribers and that's something we've been working so hard for for like about five years. So I really appreciate the support, y'all. Be sure to like the video, subscribe, and comment below with your thoughts and uh, we'll see y'all on the next episode. <laughs>